Let me show you how to derive the mean and the variance of the normal distribution. Mean and variance for the normal. And that is, let me assume actually in the beginning that I have a standard normal distribution like this. The standard normal distribution has a density which we sometimes call phi of x, which would be 1 over square root 2 pi e to minus x squared half. This is the density function for the standard normal. Now, to find mean and variance for this one, actually we would need to use kind of integration by parts rules that for when you multiply functions. However, um, there is actually kind of a neat sort of direct way to achieve this result apart not sort of uh, going this, the, the tedious way that I was indicating here. And when we do integration by parts, we need to find derivatives of functions and functions that when you take the derivative, it uh, gives other functions. So uh, we will actually check what is actually the derivative of the standard normal uh, density function. So we will find the derivative of this one. The derivative of this one is, we need to remember the rules for finding derivative of functions. We just, this is a constant. I, I take the de derivative of the inner function, which will then provide a minus x, and the exponential has its, uh, itself as a derivative where we plug in the inner function. So this would be the, um, let me see, I think I, did I miss a minus there or no, I think actually it should be okay. So this phi of x actually equals, let me just check, minus x times, again, phi of x. Note here that we have the x. If we don't look at the x, we simply have phi of x, once again, popping up in the expression. What if I take the second derivative of this? That, that means I need to take the derivative of this one. And... Um, how to do that? Well, uh, this is how to take a derivative of a, a, a product of two functions. That would then be, I put the, the minus, and then I take the derivative of the first one, of x, that is a 1, times the other function, and then plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. So this is the derivative, the second derivative of phi of x. And if I again plug in, I would have minus phi of x. I would then have, if I plug in what the derivative of x really is, that is then x times x times phi of x. So this is the second derivative, and if I take phi of x outside the parenthesis, I would have x squared minus 1 here as the second derivative of, um, uh, of x. Now, the point now is, the sort of the trick, or the, you could call the shortcut here, would be to realize, actually, that... Um, the integral of the second derivative, we will find out what that is. The integral of the second derivative here, how do we find that? Well, that would be the first derivative from minus infinity to infinity. And in fact, if we look at the derivative of 
this first function of this one, if we look at the expression here, we use knowledge from mathematical analysis that tells us that going to infinity on the x, when it comes as a square in the exponential like this, this goes faster to zero than the x tends to infinity, which means in both ends, this derivative tends to zero. So the integral of the second derivative is actually zero. Now this little thing we can, we can um, use, because if we look at the second derivative and have another expression of what is the integral of this one, we can see that this is also the difference between the integral of x squared, phi of x dx, minus the integral of, if we look at this one, phi of x dx, right? Now, this one is 1. And, well, the sum of these two are zero. So what I, have, what I have actually shown now is the fact that this term, the integral of this one from minus infinity to infinity, is actually equal to one. And please note what I have here. This is actually the mean of x squared here. So by this sort of indirect little trick I've showed, that the mean of x squared is actually 1. And also, it's pretty easy to see that what about the mean of x, actually? The mean of x would be the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x times phi of x dx. Now, if I use the symmetry here, I get a zero, basically. And it, to be explicit about it, we could go from minus infinity to zero of x, phi of x, dx. Remember that phi of x is symmetric. The density function for the standard normal looks like this, around the zero. Not very nice symmetrically shown, but it is symmetric. I take the other half from zero to plus infinity of x, phi of x, dx. And it is pretty clear, if we look at this, that these two are the same numbers, because going from minus infinity to zero with the x just is exactly the opposite of going from plus zero, from zero to plus infinity with the x. So altogether, I can see already here, due to symmetry, that the mean of the standard normal must be zero, and then I'm actually finished, because I've shown that the mean of the standard normal is actually zero. I have shown actually also that the variance of the standard normal, actually I should, uh, I call this z up here. Actually, I've used x throughout, so I should call it x actually, since I've used x all the way down actually. The variance of this standard normal would then, according to the usual rules, be the mean of the expected value of the square minus the square of the expected value. I found this one to be 1. That was the trick from above. And I just found the latter one to be 0. So the variance of the standard normal is 1. At the end,